Tip number one for creating cinematic videos with any phone is to treat each shot as a scene, a series of shots, instead of just one shot. For example, I could just show Shelly swinging on the swing like this, and that's fine. But in a movie, you would set it up. We'd maybe show the swing swinging by itself, and then a reveal of Shelly walking towards the swing, and then maybe cracking her feet, walking towards the swing, and then grabbing the rope, and then her feet coming off the ground, and then her swinging in the joy in her face as she swings in this beautiful forest. And that's way more like a movie, right? Shelly says yes, okay? Tip number two is set up your camera on your phone correctly. Movies are filmed at 24 frames a second, and if you want your videos to look cinematic, we should set them up so they film the same way a cinema camera does. If you wanna set your frame rate, how many frames per second your camera films at to 24 frames a second, just like the movies. To do that, on an iPhone, you jump into settings right here, you scroll down until you see camera, you tap on camera, and at the very top it says record video, and I've got mine set to 4K at 24 FPS, that's frames per second. You wanna make sure you do the same thing, 4K, 24 frames per second. Part two of this secret is you sometimes want to film in slow motion. That adds drama and makes it feel like a movie. Cinematic, like a movie. To do that on your phone, you also go into settings on camera and you click on the part that says record slow-mo and you set it to 1080p HD at 120 frames a second. Or if your camera could do 120 frames a second at 4K, set it to that. This is an old phone, it's an iPhone 13. I I need a new phone. Tip number three, you wanna vary your angle and your focal length. Most people walk around filming like this, just pointing the camera right around here so they can see everything, and that's fine sometimes, but it's kind of boring. I could just film this thing moving, you know, like this, and it would be fine, but that would be relatively boring. It's much cooler if you get an interesting angle. So in this case, I'm just gonna let this thing swing a little bit, and I'm gonna do this one in slow motion, and I'm gonna get an angle down here so I can see this log coming right at me, and it's just gonna look much more cinematic. You also wanna vary your focal length, meaning you can get more zoomy and more wide angle to keep it interesting. And if you don't have a zoom lens, most of your cameras do, you can just get closer or farther away from the subject. Secret number four is you wanna use foreground to reveal your subject. You see that all the time in movies. Now I could just hold my camera here and show Shelly walking over towards the swing, but how much more interesting is it if I just use this post and I slowly reveal her so that it creates a little mystery and intrigue, like, oh, what's coming up? And it just looks way more cinematic. To do that, there's a trick though. You need to lock the focus on Shelly before she stops walking because if I use this post to reveal Shelly, it's gonna first focus on the post, then it's gonna focus on Shelly, and it's just gonna be wonky and not look good. So what I need to do is have Shelly positioned where I want her to be when I start filming her, and I want to lock the focus. To do that on an iPhone, you just position your phone where it's gonna be, and I tap and hold like this, and a little box that says AEAF lock appears, and I'm not sure if it's gonna show up here, but um, right there it says AEAF lock, and there's something similar on an Android. So now I know it's going to maintain the focus, and then I position my camera right here, really close to this foreground, to this post, and then when I say action, she starts walking and I slowly reveal Shelly walking towards that swing. And that creates a much more interesting shot. Tip number five is you wanna move the camera. I could, for example, with Shelly walking, just be following her feet and moving and tracking her. In fact, Shelly would walk forward. I could be following her like this. For other scenes, you might want to pull away. You can also tilt up, tilt down, pan left, pan right. Movement adds interest. You don't wanna just be sitting there. Now, sometimes you might forget. And let's go ahead and have Shelly walk away again. And go ahead, Shelly, action. And I did pan up slightly, but I should have been maybe following her, it would have been better. And if I forgot to follow her, there's a way we can fix that in Filmora. Here in Filmora is a short sequence with the clips you just saw me film, plus a couple other ones. And you can download all of those in the link in the description below, like always, so you can follow along. And with this shot of Shelly walking, right now we can just have a look at it. She's walking, but the camera isn't following her. I didn't follow her, but we wanna maybe push in on her feet so it kind of feels like we're following her. To do that, it's really easy in Filmora by using keyframes. Now, a keyframe just marks the beginning or the end of a change in her property. And the properties that we wanna change here are scale. We wanna kind of zoom in on it a little bit and position, we wanna position it down a little bit so that the feet stay in the middle of the frame. To do that, we just position our playhead at the beginning of this clip and we do that by either hitting the up arrow, it goes to the very first frame, or we can just click on the playhead and drag it to the beginning like that, but the down arrow is a lot more precise. And then we select the clip by clicking on it and once we click on it, these options appear up here. And under Video Basic, we have Transform. We wanna change the scale 
It's going to zoom in and we want to change the position. It's going to kind of move down a little bit so the feet stay in the middle. To set a keyframe, you just hit one of these keyframe icons right here. And because the X and Y axis or scale are locked, setting one, set the next one. We also want to set a keyframe for position by clicking on this guy. Then we want to go to the last frame here and we can do that again by dragging or by hitting the down arrow and going back one frame with the left arrow. Now we're on the very last frame of this shot of Shelly's feet. And we want to zoom in a little bit, maybe 15, 20%. Don't want to be too crazy, just to make it a little bit interesting. So let's try, I don't know, right around there. And then I'm going to just click and drag it down so that the feet stay centered in the frame. And now it's going to look like this. And that's a little more interesting because we're pushing in on the shot. And another kind of pro tip is when you're doing shots like this, where it's the same shot from a different angle, you want to match the cuts. So notice right here that her right foot is just starting to come up. So right foot starting to come up here and then right foot starting to come up here so it matches. So it looks like, you know, it was a continuous shot. Now I did mess up a little bit because she's in the light here and she's in the shadow here, but you, you kind of get the idea. So this shot looks like this going into that shot where it's getting pushed in. Filmora does all kinds of cool stuff to make your videos look more cinematic. In fact, this video is sponsored by Filmora. You can try Filmora for free by clicking on the link in the description below. And in fact, I do suggest you try it. I think you're gonna like it a lot. Secret number six, you want your colors to look more cinematic, more like a movie. Cell phones tend to make videos look much more saturated than you might find in a movie. And luckily you can take the video into Filmora and it has amazing color tools that'll make your videos look much more cinematic. Here in Filmora again, we can see that these shots are pretty saturated, pretty bright, kind of brighter than you would probably see in an actual movie. So in Filmora, it's super easy to modify the color. The first thing we do is we can click on a clip and jump over here to color and down here under color we click this little down arrow if it's not already clicked and we can just turn the saturation down you know a little bit so it looks more cinematic or a lot make it black and white but there are some other even better options if we click over here on filters we have a bunch of different options for changing the color of this video so we can make you know ai color enhance we can make it more contrasty, we can make it dimly lit or black gold style, some crazy styles you can have over here and you can play with those and see which ones you like. But there's an even cooler brand new feature called AI Color Palette where you can take a still image from any movie you like and match your video to it. And the place I go for that is a website called Shot Deck right here. Just go to shotdeck.com, you get a free trial for a couple of weeks, just enter your email and then you can punch in the name of a movie or something you want to find. Let's just try forest and see what comes up. And then bam, you have a bunch of shots of forests from different movies. And if you click on it, you can see where it came from. This is from Dune 2024. If you want that kind of look, if you want to, you know, really bold blue kind of look, you can get that or this, or you could even type in the name of a movie along with that up here. And let's say Avatar, that was shot in a forest. And here's some like really cool Avatar stuff. And you go like the extreme kind of purple stuff or this cool green stuff. Let's just take, I don't know, how about, I don't know, this one is kind of green and lush. We click on that guy and it gives us the entire color palette. We right click on it and we choose save image as, and we'll just call it, we'll put it in our little Filmora sample thing right here. We'll call it uh, avatar one green. How about avatar green? There's one sample we can use. And then let's try one that's a little more wild, like this wild purple one here. Click on that guy. You can see the whole color palette. Right click, save image as avatar. So now we have a couple sample images we can match our footage to. To do that, we just go back into Filmora and we choose AI color palette right here. And now we can add one of those images so our footage will kind of match what that movie looked like. To do that, we go up here and we click on local file. We click here and we choose one of those images right here. Let's try avatar green, boom. And there it is and we can say generate, save and apply and bam, it added that green effect here and we can adjust how much we can go crazy, make it super green or just use a little bit, but it'll, it'll give us a look that would be pretty hard to dial in on our own. Let's do it one more time. I'm gonna hit add. We're gonna go to local file. I'm gonna click right here and choose avatar two, which is that purple stuff. And I'm gonna hit generate, save and apply. And now we have that purple look right here and we can adjust it so we make it subtle or kind of crazy, whatever we're wanting to do. Now we could do that to every clip, 
but that would be kind of time consuming and making it match would be maybe a pain. So I'm gonna get rid of that by hitting this undo right here and we're back to normal. And we're going to apply an effect to all of them at once. To apply it to all the clips at once, we do a kind of advanced feature called using an adjustment layer. We click over here on media, we go to adjustment layer and we just click and drag it on top of everything. And I'm going to just click on the end of it and drag it all the way over and it's gonna impact all of the clips that we're covering right here. And now I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. Now, because we already have these sample images here, we can just turn on AI color palette and choose one of them. Let's choose the green one. Bam, it just applied it to everything here. And so now we've got this whole green thing going on. And we also have this feature called protect skin tone because we don't want Shelly's face to be that green. So I can just hit this guy and slide it over a little bit and it's gonna make her face look like an actual human face and not green. And then again, we can adjust the strength of these guys too to make it more or less green like that sample footage. So probably a little less than that because that got pretty green. But that's a way to color grade your entire video with just a couple clicks. It's pretty amazing. The last thing I'm gonna share that really helps sell a video as cinematic is adding music. Now you can pay for a subscription or try to find free stuff online or just use a brand new cool feature that Filmora has called Smart Background Music Generation, Smart BGM Generation. So I just click on this guy right here and I can hit start and what it's gonna do is analyze my video. It's gonna watch my video and go, huh, what kind of music would fit this? And it's gonna make up a song for you out of thin air, which is pretty cool and you don't have to worry about copyright or anything. And because it is using AI to generate music out of thin air, it might take a second, so be patient. Oh, by the way, you don't have to sit here and stare at it and wait the whole time. You can click hide and you can keep working and it'll generate the music in the background. And down here we can see it's in progress and oh, bam. It, it's done. One of the beautiful things about it is it gives you a start and an ending. You don't have to do any fancy editing for it. And you know, it's done right there. Just fades music out at the end just perfectly. So let's go ahead and watch our final masterpiece. To check out Filmora for free, you want to click on that link right over Shelly's head. And for more tips on creating super cinematic videos, you want to watch this video right here.